Abigail is directed by the filmmakers known collectively as Radio Silence, and this is their next film after Ready or Not, Scream 5, and Scream 6. So after a group of criminals kidnap the ballerina daughter of a powerful underworld figure, they retreat to an isolated mansion, unaware that they're locked inside with no normal little girl. So if you've seen the trailers for this movie, or even some of the posters, you probably have an idea of what this movie is about, and that is of course that young Abigail, this little girl they've kidnapped, is actually a vampire. And once the characters discover that, it sets off a chain of events that is kind of like Ready or Not, except reversed. In that movie, you had one character who was against everyone else, and she was our protagonist, and she was kind of the victim. In this movie, you have one person who wants to kill everyone else, but this time it's our antagonist. This little girl is insanely powerful. And Abigail is played by Alicia Weir, who some of you may have seen in the Netflix Matilda movie. She is the star of this film, the absolute standout. So much is required of her. She has to play that innocent child at first. You feel sorry for her, you feel that she's the victim. She has all these crocodile tears, and she's excellent at that. She has to be very funny, because this character kind of relishes in her kills. She has to do a lot of physical stuff. Not only the ballerina aspect of the movie, but there's tons of wire work as well. Tiptoeing across a banister, for instance, which I read she did on her own. And she has to depict a ruthless vampire monster that wants to feast on human flesh and blood. And she rises to the occasion every step of the way. She's absolutely fantastic in this movie, and if Matilda didn't make her a star, this movie is definitely going to. But where the first half of the movie really rests its shoulders is on the dynamic present amongst the kidnappers, because none of them really know each other. They don't know each other's names, they don't share information with the other person. There is a brilliant scene that expertly handles exposition where Joey, played by Melissa Barrera, and these are all made up names they give each other, it's not their real names, tries to use her intellect and intuition to guess information about her fellow kidnappers. And she happens to be right. This tells us something about her character, but we also learn backstories about all these people who aren't supposed to tell their backstories. It's a very smart way to handle exposition and character development when you have a group of people that don't want to talk about themselves. Dan Stevens, once again, is chewing up the scenery in yet another role this year, and Godzilla Kong the New Empire, he was having a lot of fun, and he is here too. But I think the character that I felt the most empathy for was played by Kevin Durant. He plays what they refer to as the muscle. He doesn't exactly have the greatest intellect. What I really loved about his character is when he is given crap by his fellow associates about his lack of brain power. He kind of reveals a side to himself that might be a loose cannon or a fuse that's already lit. If you just keep poking him, he might just decide to kill you. And I found him very terrifying in those moments. But he's also just extremely lovable, too. And that's a major challenge this film has because its protagonists are all willing to kidnap a little girl for money. They don't know that she's a vampire. And so there's a bit of an uphill battle in regards to likability. But the film does a pretty good job with it because essentially the person we're following is Melissa Barrera as Joey. And she doesn't want anything to do with this at first. She didn't know that their target was a little girl. And so you kind of side with her initially. The film is also exceedingly gory. There are quite a bit of kills and blood everywhere. Everybody in this cast at one point or another is covered in thick syrupy blood. There was, however, one nagging thought that kept bothering me throughout this entire film primarily during the first half, but I kept thinking about it afterwards. And it's not so much a fault with the movie as it is with the marketing, but it's a fault with the marketing that I understand. If you didn't see the trailer, you might not know that this little girl is a vampire. And this movie does keep that a secret for a while. And so things are happening around these characters in this mansion that they can't explain. And there's plenty of scenes where the characters are speculating about what might be going on and they think that perhaps they're being targeted by an outside force, or maybe they kidnap someone who's daughter to a far powerful figure than they could have ever imagined, and now this person is messing with them. There's all this speculation the characters are talking about, and it's very intriguing, but the whole time I'm sitting there thinking, I know everything that you guys don't know, because the trailers told me this little girl is a vampire, and I know that she's the one doing this. And for an audience member, that's a really bad place to be for a horror, a thriller, an action, really any genre film, is ahead of the characters. 
If I know things before the characters know things, I'm just waiting for them to catch up. Sometimes that can work in a film's favor. It builds suspense. You know that somebody's creeping up behind a character in a room and they don't see that person and you're just like pointing behind them hoping that they notice. That's a suspense build. But when basically the entire first half of your movie relies on the intrigue of what is going on in this mansion, and I already know what's going on, I do kind of wish there was a way these trailers could have been more like Barbarian, which was built around what is in the basement. And so much more happened in Barbarian than just what was in the basement, but that was enough to get me excited. So I wish we lived in a world where the trailers for this movie could have just promoted that something was amiss or wrong or different about Abigail, and that would have been enough. We still probably would have guessed things, and who knows what type of money this movie will make on opening weekend since I saw it early, but it probably would not have been the same amount if we didn't know that it was about a vampire monster little girl, because that aspect of the movie is fun and it's an easy marketing pitch. But I couldn't help but imagine the viewer who knows nothing about this movie just wondering what's going on and having fun with the guessing game for about 45 minutes until a reveal happens. And I feel like that person just like the first person who ever read the script, knowing nothing about the movie, is gonna have the best experience. That's a topic though for a whole nother video, is just how much enjoyment can you get out of a movie when you know nothing about it? Do you like having those expectations? Because some people, and I have friends who wanna know everything about a movie before they watch it because they get very emotionally involved in a movie. They wanna know if an animal dies in the film or a specific type of thing that might trigger them. They wanna know everything. I really wish I didn't know anything when I watch basically every movie. I would love to go in just with as little information as possible. But when it comes to Abigail, this is an extremely fun horror movie that has great action sequences, some surprisingly effective humor, a terrific performance from Alicia Weir, who is absolutely a star. And if you liked Ready or Not, I can only assume that you'll have a good time with Abigail. So definitely check this one out, especially if you're a horror fan. It's a lot of fun at the movies. Thank you so much, as always, for watching. Look forward to more videos very soon. And if you like this, you can click right here and get stuckmanized.